Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship on this windy Sunday morning. It is a blessing to see how many of you the wind has blown in today. I have several announcements for this morning as we get going today. Let's see. The first, since we are coming into Montana fall, which we, is, we know is notoriously short, um, we will be putting storm windows into, onto the manse um, in the next week or two, if you are able to help with that. Um, John and Dan are arranging it. Should be a fairly short process. At some point in the history of the manse, um, the windows didn't finish getting painted, so the plan is to take the screens off, put them on sawhorses, paint them, put the storm windows up, and then put the uh, screens away with a fresh coat of paint on. So uh, probably a two hour or less project if we get a few hands to help. So please see John and Dan if you're able to help with that. Second is our mission and memorial committee meeting did change. It was originally scheduled for 4 p.m. this Thursday. If you are an attender of that meeting, it has gone to 7 p.m. Uh, that's here at the church on the 14th. We continue to uh, collect information to update our church directory. If you have a phone number, address, or email that has changed, please let the church office know. In the month of November, we plan to print uh, updated copies of directories so people can take them home. We are, if you flip through your bulletin for this morning, we are doing a hymn pick for next Sunday. There is, I believe, a slip of paper in the, uh, back of, in, in the back of your bulletin. I've got one of the larger copies, but if you have not yet picked your three favorite hymns, please um, put them in there, drop them in the offering tray on your way out of the sanctuary this morning. Uh, the top three hymns with the most choices will be, three to four hymns with our most choices will be what we hear in worship next Sunday. Uh, we have begun work on our uh, Festival of Trees tree for Intermountain. This year's theme is Nomeo and Juliet. It's based on a children's movie. Uh, if you have a moment, take a chance to look at the uh, bulletin board that's been put out in the narthex there. It has a wish list of items that they are looking for for this year's tree. The Presbytery met both virtually and in person yesterday at Seely Lake. As part of that, our church was selected to host as one of next year's sites. Our church will be hosting Presbytery the first weekend in June of 2022. So in about uh, seven or eight months here, Presbytery will be hosted here at Sunrise. As well as that, uh, as well as selecting us to host next year, um, our church also had one of the highest attendance um, rates for groups in the Presbytery yesterday. We had um, there were at least four of us from Sunrise there, and that included uh, two new members who have been voted on to committees and boards for the Presbytery. So. Uh, good job, Sunrise, on your continued commitment to Glacier Presbytery. It really is a great place to work and do ministry. Um, one personal item, uh, we are uh, in the process of starting to seek uh, child care for our son, Jesse. As you know, he is immune compromised, and so uh, watching him comes with a lot of caveats. Um, but we are looking for someone who can watch him uh, part-time during the week who is vaccinated, uh, relatively socially isolated, and has enough energy to keep up with a busy three-year-old. If you know someone who might fit that criteria, uh, please uh, pass their uh, name on to us or let um, uh, speak with them and we would be happy uh, to talk with them about that possibility. I believe that, uh, oh, one other item, uh, the installation for me here at Sunrise, which I am looking forward to, will be hosted here on October 23rd at 11 a.m. That is a Saturday service, uh, 11 a.m. here in the sanctuary, and then there will be a reception that follows. That weekend is also the weekend of, of Sunrise Church's 65th birthday. 
Um, so we will have cake to celebrate uh, the installation as well as celebrating Sunrise's 65th year. With that, let us prayerfully begin. Oh, I see one more announcement from the back. On behalf of the session from the Buildings and Grounds Committee, we'd like to thank Ember and Jim Woods. Woody and Jim have, Woody and Ember have been here every day for the last three months in watering the flowers. So thank you very much. It sounds like tonight and tomorrow night. <laughs> we may be losing our buzz tonight and tonight, tomorrow night. And um, we'd like to thank Ben and Jeanette, too, for the flowers out in front of this church. Thank you. Thanks. Let us know. Oh, another one. Tomorrow night at 7 is the Faith and Life Committee meeting. Oh, okay. Everybody's interested in joining us. Faith and Life Committee meeting tomorrow night here at 7 p.m. Very good. Let us now prayerfully begin our worship service. Mm -hmm. from the prophet come down through the ages seek good and not evil seek the Lord and live may the Lord our God be with us seek good and not evil that justice may prevail may the Lord our God show us grace come let us lift our voices in song
Please remain standing as you are able. Join with me in our prayer of confession. God of justice and mercy, we confess that we put ourselves first and trust in things that will not last. We desire the evil and scorn the good. We gather up power and wealth and push aside the needy in our way. O oh Lord, be gracious to us in spite of our great sin. Teach us to love your justice and share your mercy. Help us to seek the treasure of heavenly life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Friends, our God is a God who is from everlasting to everlasting, slow to anger, quick to forgive, and abiding in steadfast love. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel this day. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. your word, O God, living and active in our world by the power of your Holy Spirit. Let your word pierce our hearts and open our minds, dividing good from evil, truth from falsehood, life from death, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the first scripture reading, I have to compliment you. You are one of the best reading churches I have ever encountered. Um, and I have been in big churches and small churches, and you all are fantastic at it. It's a little intimidating. If I miss a word, you're going to catch it. <laughs> this first scripture reading this morning comes from the prophet Amos, perhaps one of the most uh, well-known pieces of prophetic literature. Hear these words. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel, and no one will quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves the gate, and they abhor the one who will speak the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses hewn of stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many of you are transgressors, and I know how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy who are at the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. It may, may it be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. So ends the reading of the word. I'd like to invite our children up for a time of conversation. Would you like to come up for a second? No? Yeah? Hey, that's okay. You can stay there. Oh, it must be yellow shirt day. I missed out. I love your fall colors. You both have great fall colors. Did you notice there was something different when we came in today? You did? What was it? I'm very happy. There's no animals here today. <laughs> <laughs> they were way more fun, but we did have these. And did you know those ones? You know what they are? So we're going to try this today. This is a new communion cup. And it's got 
got two teeth. Got this little skinny plastic layer. Just that. And then it's got a, another layer underneath. So if you open the top one, it's got a little piece of bread in there. We call it bread. It's actually like a little teeny tiny flat wafer of nothingness. And then underneath, it's got some cheese. Do you like cheese? I like cheese. But this is part of communion. Have you ever heard about communion? Have, no? Yeah, it's something we don't talk about a lot until you get bigger. But in the Presbyterian Church, we believe that anybody can get communion. It doesn't matter how close you are. As long as you can, as long as you can hold it and get it to your mouth or have assistance doing it, you can have it. You know why? Any guesses? Well, it's because we believe that we are all connected to Jesus, and this is one of the ways that we connect to Jesus. Can we go look at the table up here? Would you come look at the table up here? Yeah. So over here, so this is this is the bread that we use. Come look. That's okay. So this is the bread we use, and in here there's juice. And we believe that when we have this, this bread and this drink, that it reminds us that we are all part of Jesus' community. And isn't that neat that we share that? Who do you usually share food with? Mom? Yeah. Do you share food with anybody? You do? Mom and Dad, maybe? Yeah. We share food with people we love, right? Yeah, it's one of the things that we do in community with each other. And that's what we do as Christians, too. When we come to this table, we say that everybody can participate. Because we love each other like brothers and sisters in Christ. I think that's kind of cool. So later on today, I would invite you to have one of these with us together so that we can remind ourselves that we are all part of the family of Christ. Cool, huh? I think so. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming up and joining me today. What have you got there? Can you tell me about that? Oh, really nice. Cool. Well, thank you so much for coming up and joining me today. I'll see you later, okay? All right, thanks. <laughs> As we're giving them time to get back to their seats and get settled, let us uh, stay seated as we join together in singing our next hymn.
For our second scripture reading for this morning, we are moving off our lectionary text, moving to the Gospel of Luke for this morning. Uh, On that same sheet of paper that has the hymn picks on the bottom, there are some sermon questions for this morning. Um, We are going to do a a slightly different type of sermon today. We're going to do a, a listening exercise. But here we're going to read now and listen to the scripture as it comes from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 10. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him for half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, He was moved to pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Now, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said to him, the one who showed mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This story captures our attention and our imagination. It is a story that's so wide known that it uh, surpasses the Christian circles and it's known among secular groups. We have good Samaritan laws in our country. But let us now listen contemplatively and slowly as we move through this scripture together. If you're feeling brave today, I would encourage you to answer out loud. But if you're not, answer to yourself silently. As we read, consider these things. What time of year do you imagine it is? Which character are you in the story? What do you see in this story as you picture it that may not exactly exist in the text? Then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? As you hear these words, what do you wonder? What do you notice? Who was around them? We only see two characters here, Jesus and the lawyer. Do we assume them to be alone? Are they surrounded by an audience? 
is this part of Jesus teaching among the crowds and a man who has interrupted? Or is this one of his many encounters with those who would act against him? What catches your attention here? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. What do you notice here? <clears throat> what do you wonder about? <clears throat> How do you think the lawyer hears the words of Jesus? Why do those words sound so familiar? What do you wonder? What do you notice? But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? <clears throat> to whom does the lawyer feel he must justify himself? What is his stake in being right? What difference does it make in the lawyer's life whether or not he can outwit Jesus in a battle of words? What do you wonder here? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. What image comes to mind here? What do you wonder? What do you notice? Do you think about the terrain? What would that road have been like from Jerusalem to Jericho? Moving from the relatively well-populated area into a sparser, more desert area. What would the road have been like? How many people would have been on it? Had the man ever taken this road before? Why was the man on the road at all? Did the man have any companions who left him when he fell into the hands of the robbers? Was he going to visit family or friends, or was he on an errand for an employer? Who were the robbers? The ones who stripped him and beat him and left him for half dead. Were the robbers themselves people who were desperate for food and enough money to live? Were they simply a band of robbers for whom this was a career path? When they left the man for half dead, do you think they supposed that they had actually killed him?
was the man expected to live. How old was the man? Did he have anything worth stealing in the first place? What do you notice? What do you wonder? Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. What do you wonder? What do you notice? Do you notice that both the priest and the Levite were considered the most religious of the Jewish population? Do you notice that their own jobs and livelihoods would have been put at risk if they had approached the man on the other side of the road for touching anyone who was unclean themselves, covered in blood and muck and yuck, would have made a person ritually unclean. <clears throat> Do you wonder if those, the priest and the Levi, if they, while they passed on the other side of the road, were their hearts moved with pity? Did they worry about their own well-being, worried that the robbers may simply be laying in wait, watching for someone to stop so that they would have others to attack? Do you wonder about the heart of the priest, one who is called to serve God but who leaves a man half dead on the side of the road. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Were the priest and the Levite both traveling alone? What time of day is it? What's the weather like? How far across the road was the man? But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him. And when he saw him, he was moved to pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. And then he put him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. What do you wonder? What do you notice? Was the Samaritan alone? Did the Samaritan have that money to spare? A Samaritan would have been found here in the middle of Israel between Jericho and Jerusalem. Samaritans were the outsiders, always considered less than the other, perhaps one who couldn't be trusted here he is in the middle of a country that doesn't like him very much. Why was the Samaritan on the road that day? Did he have a family that he needed to get home to? Why was 
was the Samaritan moved to pity in a way that the priest and the Levite were not. Had he himself, through experiences of discrimination and degradation, gained more empathy than others? What do you notice? What do you wonder? He went to him and bandaged his wounds, poured oil and wine on them, put him on his own animal, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. What kind of animal was it? Were those supplies the only supplies he carried? If he took him to an inn and took care of him, what things in his own life were he ne was he neglecting to get to? Which of these three do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? What do you wonder? What do you notice? What character are you? Are you the man who has been beaten and left for half dead? A Levite? A priest? Are you the Samaritan? The innkeeper who keeps the man on faith? Are you an observer from the distance, too far away to offer any help? What do you wonder? What do you notice? The lawyer said, the one who showed mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Do you think the lawyer was a man who could go and show mercy? To live in the way of the Samaritan? This one who has tried to catch Jesus in a verbal trap? Does Jesus know the heart of the lawyer? Or is he telling this story for those who are listening, if there are any around? What do you wonder? What do you notice? When we encounter this scripture, when we read into it deeply, we hope that we are the Samaritans, the ones who would stop on the side of the road to help a stranger, to pick them up, to bandage their wounds, to care for and provide for them. But we know it's easier to be like the Levite, to pass by without stopping, to not put our own lives or safety or resources in danger, to be able to go home to our families and fulfill the vows of our work and our religious duties. When Jesus calls us to be like the Samaritan, it's not an easy call.
as followers of Jesus, we are called to give ourselves to others as Jesus has given himself for us. Therefore, it is with gratitude for Christ's grace that we offer our lives to the Lord. I have a few items that I will lift up in prayer before opening it up to you 
and then we will take these prayers of joy and of sorrow as we come to the Thanksgiving table. Uh, the first two items I have for this morning, uh, the first is a personal one. Today marks the three-year anniversary of my son Jesse's bone marrow transplant, and that is a joy, but also a very emotional thing um, for a parent who's had a child with a bone marrow transplant. So we give thanks to, I give thanks to God this morning for that. Uh, second is a, an item of ongoing concern. Richard shared with me this morning that he uh, continues to wait for his pathology testing. Uh, the uh, report on that was delayed, so he continues to wait in uh, anticipation for that. So prayers please for Richard as he continues to wait for pathology testing. What joys and concerns do you bring this day? What was her first name? Andrea. Andrea? Yeah, Andrea. Embrya. Um, sick and doctors are not able to find out what's going on. Okay. That is a concern. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm at Claire's for our neighbor, Ken, who lost his daughter recently. And, um, and then I am going to Missouri to start. Mm -hmm. uh, prayers for uh, Forsyth neighbor Ken, who uh, recently lost his, you say his daughter. daughter. Yeah, she's 65, so. Okay, young. Um, and prayers for both Jeanette and Ben as they travel to Missoula this afternoon to meet with a cochlear implant specialist tomorrow to find out if there may be a path forward there. So that is... Um, uh, both exciting and nerve-wracking, I'm sure. What other joys and concerns do you have today? Let us take these as we come to the communion table. My handheld microphone does not, mine, I, our handheld microphone, <laughs> does not seem to be working very well today. So I'm going to be, uh, I'll read the Great Thanksgiving responsibly from here at the pulpit, and then I will move to the communion table for the breaking of the elements. Jesus calls all people to sit at table with him. The sick, the uncertain, the weak, and the poor, the Pharisees and the tax collectors. From north and south and east and west, he calls us to come and sit at this table, the foretaste of the kingdom of God. On a night long ago, Jesus sat at table with his disciples. They thought they were the hosts and he the guest, but then he broke bread and their eyes were opened and they recognized him. The guest became the host. The foolish one was revealed as wisdom. To this table, to this banquet of wisdom, he calls us again. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and our greatest delight to praise you, O God. In the beginning of time, your wisdom danced through creation, calling forth light and life. Through wisdom, you formed us in your image, calling us to love you and to serve you. Foolishly, we turned away and abandoned your ways of justice and mercy. Yet you did not reject us, but continued to call us and claim us as your own. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of power and might. And blessed is Jesus Christ, the one who comes in your name. In his life, he called unlikely people to follow him. Fisher folk, tax collectors, children, sinners, skeptics, and betrayers. On the cross, he gave himself up to the powers of this world. Yet by that very cross, you, Holy One, have undone and remade the wisdom of the world, drawing light from darkness, power from humiliation, and life from death itself. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ shall come again. As we come to this table, we remember that this is the Lord's table, that all who come seeking Jesus Christ are welcome here, young and old, rich and poor, from every time and every place. Jesus, on the night of his arrest, sat at table with his disciples. He took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. He said, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Therefore, each time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we show forth Christ's death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we come into our time of communion this morning, we are doing a, trying a new method. Uh, if you have not picked up a cup at the table when you entered, please raise your hand and someone would be happy to bring one to you. These little cups have two layers. There's a first thin layer of plastic over the top. If you pull that back, it reveals a tiny little wafer inside. And then if you peel the second layer, there reveals the juice. If you have difficulty, please raise your hand and somebody would be happy to come and assist you with it. Let us take the elements. Remembering the prayers lifted before us and the prayers of our own hearts, let us join together in the prayer following communion. 
Holy God, we pray this day for peace among nations, food for the hungry, justice for the poor, and a life of dignity for all people. We pray for new life in the church, fresh energy in mission, faithfulness in ministry, and reconciliation in the body of Christ. We pray for the welfare of this community, safe streets and homes, good schools and jobs, and the spirit of love among neighbors. We pray for the healing of all who suffer, comfort for the afflicted, hope for the despairing, and strength for those who care for them. O God, in whom all things are possible, we commend these prayers to you and commit our lives to seek your will through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. again together in song. shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. Amen.